Hey, what's up? Hi. Just fine. We have a Father's Day celebrating today, this Sunday. So I had really lovely surprises this morning from my family. So happy Father's Day. How many kids do you have? Only one. Only one. But there was uh, some gift for you this morning, I think. Yeah, yeah. They had uh, done some... some uh, very fine paperwork uh, at school so <laughs> i i got a special handmade gift card nice how old is uh, mm, your son? Yeah. you have a son yeah son yeah okay. yeah he's 10 he's 10 at the moment yeah is he into metal music uh not, not yet, yet but, but we'll see <laughs> let's hope <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let's let's go to talk about uh, pressure points. Uh, um, well, I'm not going to ask you much about about your last album because we talk uh, last spring for for an interview for the offering website. So if people want to hear more about the album, they can uh, check the other interview. For, but you just play a gig last uh, Friday, am I right? Yes, we did. We we had a gig uh, in Seinäjoki at uh, bar fifteen. So it, uh, it yeah, it was really nice. Uh, at least uh, it was like a local gig for me, but not the rest of the guys yeah. <laughs> of the band. So, but but uh, <clears throat> many familiar faces, and actually we had a pre-listening party at one of um, our friends' house before the gig. So it was really yeah. nice. Have a couple of beers and uh, listening to the new album throughout. So, yeah, nice. And uh, I remember that the la last time we met here in Pori, <laughs> um, we were talking about the upcoming gigs because you had uh, several, and you are still uh, four gigs left this year. And one in yeah, the I had to count them once more because I wasn't really sure that how many gigs did, did we still have <laughs> left. But yeah, I think it was four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, well, we we have had a lot of gigs during the autumn, and it um, it seems uh, uh, Kamos Metal Cruise it was really fine event and a lot of lot of familiar faces there as well. So um, yeah. the Audiences have been really welcoming for us, for and and for the new album as well. So yeah, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, nice. And uh, you are uh, actually writing new music with Pressure Point. Am I right? Yeah, at the mo yeah, yeah. At the moment, we have already booked uh, studio times, and um, I think uh, we have. Uh, two songs upcoming for the uh, um, in the I think uh, maybe in February okay. if I, I, I think uh, <clears throat> I might think uh, maybe too positive but I I want to think that they are ready in February and we are also uh, doing doing a music video and of course we want to have a new material for the maybe uh, summer festivals next summer maybe have some kind of fresh uh, fresh fresh music out for the summer and nice. staying active and doing yeah. of, of course well, we have a lot of ideas that the uh, already that we had uh, before the island album that uh, they they weren't on the album but we we have uh, like continued the process in, uh, last last few months so uh, yeah there are a lot of lot of new stuff coming up okay nice to hear and uh, we have just to wait a few months not that much if everything goes as planned yeah if everything goes to according to plan, so not not so not so long time for the new press points material. Yeah, what can you tell about uh, th those new songs that are coming soon? Well, at least they are 
um, I don't want to like reveal too much, but I can say that they are shorter. Uh, there are maybe some more melodic death metal uh, kind of uh, aspects than before. I think they are, <laughs> at one word, they could be more radio friendly than before. So let's yes. see what happens. I, I think they are maybe reaching out for the new audience as well. I uh, there, there are a lot of new elements and maybe maybe kind of uh, more simple structures uh, in song, in song. Um, and yeah, that, that's, <clears throat> that's maybe quite a different kind of pressure points that, that it's coming out soon. Okay, interesting. So let's wait to hear your new stuff. But uh, um, you also are in the, the in the band uh, Delirium Order. Yeah. And uh, the the last album was released in 2019. Yeah, it was the singularity. It, it was a uh, real kind of uh, collection of uh, songs and ideas we uh, that have been boggling the last few years uh, before before 2019 but of course we had only one gig uh, at Tuska Festival that year, but um, our inactivity uh, it uh, causes quite a lot. Of course, uh, Ukri, our drummer Ukri Suvilehto, he has a lot of like uh, duties with uh, because he's permanently a member in Abath, so so he's very active and touring all the time. Uh, all over the world, so so that uh, quite requires all all his time at the moment. So we we can do much at the moment, but uh, and um, uh, delirium disorder has always been like a project of uh, the mastermind Juha Kupiainen, and that uh, it's mainly his songs structures and he uh, his vision of. Uh, of technical death metal, so uh, he's kind of, if we can say he's a sing in a single player mode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of summarizes the the album name, Singularity, quite well, I think. Okay, and uh, you played in uh, 2015 with Insomnium. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, many did, uh, uh, did you play with them? Uh, we did one Euro tour with uh, it consisted uh, consisted uh, it was uh, I think it was okay so it's eight years that I have to remember a bit but I I think it was uh, like one month we did uh, um, 30 gigs in Europe and then we had the uh, we had the far East or Asian uh, OCN tour, uh, we did uh, gigs in Taiwan and uh, Japan, two gigs in there, and then, and then also toured Australia for three gigs. So it was really, really I'm kind of... Traveling. Uh, yeah, it, a lot of traveling, a lot of sitting in the, air, uh, in the planes and at airports, a lot of, uh, a lot of waiting and that kind of that kind of stuff but really i i'm still really happy for the guys that i got the chance to do and also see kind of a glimpse uh from the pro professional kind of side of music business so it was really kind of good yeah. cool for me experience. and of course of course the uh, fans they were really fans fantastic and they were really like encouraging me and uh like the welcome was really warm during the tour so it, it was really nice memories from that era there is uh, any gigs from from the tour that you remember uh, most uh, for some some weird reason well i i think um uh, uh i think uh Maybe afterwards, there were um, 
there was a venue that uh, the same venue that the awful terrorist uh, stuff happened in Paris a few months later. So it was it was really like uh, re really like um, hard to maybe maybe think about uh, what happened just a few months uh, after we we've been playing at the same venue so yeah. uh, well certain moments but of course a uh, lot more happy moments than that I I think uh, I think uh, we had the kind of uh, co-headline tour uh, that European tour with NC Ferrum that I, I have really nice memories that uh, uh, with Sami Hinka, the bass player from Enciferum, we we did a jogging and exercising, <laughs> really uh, like uh, <clears throat> before before sound checks. We we were just uh, jogging around the local local areas and uh, just the get get the kind of being on the shape, of course, because touring is uh, otherwise it's kind of part there's a lot of partying and uh a lot of staying staying up uh, like uh all maybe just uh, being awake uh, like the whole night and then few hours sleep and then back to the same routine kind of consistently it, it kind of goes goes on a circle and uh from that uh, perspective it was really nice to have some kind of uh healthy side of things as well during the tour yeah yeah nice <laughs> but um uh how do you think uh uh i mean i have to formulate what i want to ask <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what are the main differences uh in the different uh, place in the world uh, when you play uh as the the fans, for example, or the location or organization, uh, what are the differences that you noticed? Well, at at least uh, I can say that the uh, fans in Japan they are really like out of this world. We had the uh, meet and greet sessions before before shows, and the uh, people came um, with presents. I got kimono, and uh, there's been like uh, some fans. They they had drawn us for the like uh, the band members. They were like anime or manga kind of characters, uh, and a lot of different kind of. Uh, it, it was really like the um, respect and like uh, honoring your uh, your idols. It's. Uh, totally from different world in, uh, world in the Far East. Uh, I think it was really kind of, uh, at times it was really uh, kind of, not to say it was annoying, but it was really kind of, uh, we we were totally blown off like, uh, hey, we're just the uh, same kind of people. Uh, that we're not like half gods here. So it was really like, uh, <laughs> like for <clears throat> at least for the um like the small town boy uh, as i am it was really like it was weird <laughs> yeah to being being to being on a being like god like a character there so it it was re really weird i always think that it's quite uh, interesting how people are uh, i mean how they put on the uh, on the higher level uh, artist, and uh, yeah, I I'm the, the first one to support and uh, love uh, artist and everything. But sometimes I think, uh, um, and I'm not talking about the metal scene now, but in more the pop culture. How can uh, those uh, singer actors leave because they have all the time people on them they cannot live without the 
the fear to having someone taking video photos or uh, following. For me, it's something crazy to think. I will never do nothing like that. And, uh, you know, even uh, nowadays, uh, if there is a gig, a festival, if uh, I, I'm not doing interview with the band, I I rather stay at my place. I'm not going to bother the person. I try to respect the person because I know also before gigs or after gigs, uh, people want their time. Yeah. So I I always think that uh, there is a time for everything. Uh, if I if there is not meet and greet, if the, if I don't have interviews, so I prefer not to bother the artist. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite quite interesting how uh, fanatism can be. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's uh, quite hard to when you want to have some privacy. I think one of my biggest idols, the the late drummer of uh, Canadian rock band Rush, Neil Peart, he, he actually write some lyrics from that aspect aspects as well uh, to the to the song limelight it's like uh, uh, you have to be on spotlight all the time that and then then there are times that you want to have some privacy and you, you are not gonna have it because the fans they are surrounding you and of course they uh, what I can remember, there were some fans. Of course, it's uh, I I can say it's really nice and really like heartwarming. But at the same time, it's kind of quite strange that the uh, actually the Insta tour we did in Europe uh, 2015. It was uh, the several fans. They were like gathering together and they they just uh, kind of travel after the band and uh, of course uh, when, when there was a next venue next town they were already before the sound check at the venue then <laughs> they were earlier there than us so it was really really kind of weird that they okay you are here again <laughs> yesterday we saw like uh, in a different country uh, 1500 kilometers away so it, it, it was really kind of of course there, there's a fine line that the uh, between like your personal life and the kind of uh, kind of uh, artist that you know, uh, and the kind of uh, kind of person that uh, represent you present yourself, but you also represent uh, like a band. And and there's uh, some sometimes it's hard that you want to like uh, draw a line between between those two, and yeah. it's uh, it's not always possible and then it's kind of stressing. Yeah, I'm I'm not famous, I'm no one, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, yeah. I have been uh, reading some books and uh, uh, interviews and uh, looking around. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite, uh, uh, you know, some sometimes uh, worried that uh, for some artists it can be too too much <laughs> at some point, uh, mm. but uh, it's part of the it's part of the business. <laughs> yeah, it is. Of course, you you have to like like that on a certain level. You have to have to like to be on the spotlight. Of course, of yeah. course, that's. Uh, as you said, it's uh, kind of belongs to this business, and it's uh, it's the it's a really kind of um, important part of the being connected to your fan fans, and of course, it's uh, it's a really most of the times it's really like rewarding for yourself as well to being on the, maybe uh, meeting fans on the merch booth and uh, sharing some experiences and of course having nice times, ha having few photos and maybe grab a beer and that kind of stuff. It's normally, it's really like rewarding. Yeah, yeah, for sure it is. And of course, fans are important because 
without people buying, listening, coming to the gigs, uh, it's it's impossible to emerge. Because yeah, you can yeah. Do, you you do music for yourself because you love music. It's 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 something that comes from your heart. But then there is also the part that <laughs> you you, you yeah, need yeah of to... course it's yeah. Of course, it's really nice if somebody, someone else than yourself like like it as well. But as you said, it's uh, uh, in Treasure Points, I think it, uh, because we're still kind of small band, it, it always been like uh, we are doing, primarily we are doing the music for ourselves and enjoying. Uh, we have um, many times talk about it with Willie, uh, and the other guys that uh, we are maybe the biggest fans of uh, biggest fans of our own band <laughs> to say because of course uh, you have to you have to love what you do and and you have to do what you love yeah you have to be real to yourself and to what you want to do yeah yeah but uh, let's get back to Pressure points and uh, uh, tours. Uh, um, so you mentioned before that you want to have uh, new music to play uh, during the summer festival. So there are summer festival coming. Uh, the, there is not much uh, out for the moment, but uh, and I'm not asking in which festival you are playing because you, for sure you cannot say now. But uh, how many festivals uh, you think you are going to play next summer? Uh, well, at least I hope uh, many as possible. But we uh, we don't have any confirmations yet for the for the upcoming summer. Maybe some uh, some discussions on the way, but nothing confirmed yet. And as you said that. Uh, if there if there uh would already be something confirmed i can't really say say yeah. at the uh, before the like uh festivals themselves doing the yeah doing the lineup yeah like okay. revealings okay but uh, let's wait then but, yeah uh besides playing you also uh work on instrument, your custom instrument and uh, doing modification. Um, is this a proper job or is more like a hobby? Yeah. Uh, nowadays, it's more like, a, like it, it is how to say it's kind of sidekick. <laughs> sidekick work. Uh, um, maybe it's more like I'm still doing some custom works uh, for for some friends and and repair and maintenance jobs, but I'm not building instruments like from from scratch at the moment because I have a day job. I'm uh, I'm in Finnish uh, like um, retail uh, chain uh, Motonet. I, I'm there. Uh, my my work profession is I am a department store manager so so there are a lot of works in uh, a, lo a lot to do in my normal workplace and yeah. uh, building and fixing instruments or doing some customized uh, or customization it's it's more like a hobby at the moment yeah yeah and uh, did you study for learning how to do it or did you learn by yourself Actually, I studied it in back in almost twenty years ago. I was uh, there. There is one school in Finland, uh, the Ikalinen uh, School of Arts and Crafts, uh, and you can you can learn like a luthier there. So and that's um, it, it's a three year school, and I can re re recommend it to anyone who is interested in building instruments and learn that kind of stuff but uh, and of course uh, there were like uh, certain periods during uh, during the um, 
<clears throat> school uh, school it was i think it was like 2005 that i spent uh, like half a year in helsinki and one uh one one luthier's shop and that uh, i was repairing repairing the customers uh, instruments and that kind of stuff it was really like the when you get the into the actual work that and the fulfilling like the requirements of the customer it was more rewarding and i think it was the like the most essential part of the uh, whole whole school period that uh, that i got the uh, being involved with the actual customers yeah i think it's really an interesting uh, job to do and uh, it's uh, when you have a uh, uh, custom made and made uh, piece uh, guitar bus or whatever uh, it's it's something so beautiful so yeah uh, I'm sure that I will be not able to do those kind of things but I I love the idea that maybe in another life I was one of those <laughs> doing some violins yeah. or things like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, it's quite the same that with uh, with the music itself. That of course, if uh, it's a kind of uh, instrument, it's always kind of it's a personal thing. It um, and it's the way and the kind of uh, how to say it. It's kind of an item to express yourself and. Uh, uh, Put yourself out loud, and uh, th there are a lot of, uh, of course, when when you're doing some custom works for the customers, it's like you want to like uh, know what uh, you have to bleed your soul to the to the instrument as well. That uh, it, it's really important. I think I think uh, I think uh, the latest works I have done, uh, for example. Uh, for Marcus Vanhala of uh, Insomnium and Omnium Catherine. Uh was the green one? Mar yeah, that that's the green one. Marcus had a, a vision that we should maybe uh, like combine his favorite things and colors and themes. Like uh, he's really into American cars, and then we had the idea that uh, he had a green corvette and of course the striping work uh, of the guitar it was more like uh, from the eddie Van halen stuff from the 80s that he had the similar kind of patterns in his instruments and but yeah and there, there was a little bit of corvette and then there was a little bit of eddie Van halen <laughs> yeah i saw the pictures so the, the pictures the... with the guitar and the car <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we like combined the best best part of both worlds to yeah, say. Yeah, uh, a really nice work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about metal music in general. Um, when did you start to listen to metal? Uh, I think it was uh, in early nineties. I was really young. <laughs> young lad at the time it was uh i think the metallica's black album uh i got it uh as a christmas present uh from my parents uh back in it was i think the album got out in 1991 and i think it was a year later maybe it was a christmas 1992 i think and that was the like a horse kick in my arts that hey it really this is something different and uh, this is what i like and uh, have to uh, like remember that i've been nine years old so it was really at the at the young age and um before that it was not uh, actually uh, today i'm not so uh, i'm not actually listening uh, quite a lot of metal uh, at time it it it's really maybe more classic rock and prog, prog kind of stuff, maybe from 
uh, the weird, weird uh, old guys from uh, with the weird mustache from <laughs> from seventies. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's more like uh, maybe classic rock and prog that that uh, where my musical influences come from. But o- of course, there uh, like um, there's always ha- has been a metal side of things as well. Yeah. Uh, but it was uh, during the nineties. I think it was like a uh, ordinary story to think it you know, like Metallica, Iron Maiden, Megadeth, that kind of stuff that really got me into. And of course, there was Dream Theater, uh, Rush, but that was the older band. But maybe if we think about prog metal, it was uh, first of all Dream Theater, Symphony X, uh, yeah. uh, Fate's Warning. And of course, Queen's Reich was a very big influence for me. Uh, and uh, the 80s hair metal was really like uh, that, that will always uh, have been a part of my, my how to say, musical education because there were a lot of like uh, old albums uh, in my father's record shelf that I, I've been uh, like, like <laughs> go, going. On and off, like, but a lot of, for example, White Snake and that kind of stuff. It, it, it's. I still, uh, still um, listen it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, the classic, <laughs> let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The classic metal. Do, do you have a, a particular band that uh, you say that is your favorite? It's really hard to say. There are so many, so many great artists. But if I, it, it's really hard to say or name just one. Yeah. But I, well, <laughs> 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 no, no. When I think it, it, it's really like impossible to name just one. But yeah, and there is a a particular album that you think is. Uh, the best album for you, the one that uh, have more influences on you. Mm-hmm. I think uh, maybe the synthesizer era Rush albums uh, in the mid or um, late eighties, like Hold Your Fire, Power Windows, that kind of stuff. Then there was a theme album from Queens, right? The Operation Mind Crime. It's still still in like uh, like in a free frequent or the, it rotates on my record plate quite often. Uh, still a bad, but I yeah may, maybe those the they um, maybe one particular album has been it's been um, uh, I think it might have been the first album that I ever listened like uh, how to say throughoutly it was uh, Emerson Lake and Palmers that and that's o- o- uh, also a concept album Tarkus it, it, it really had kind of big uh, impact on my how I see and feel and uh, want to do music myself. Like it, it was really something um, at a very early age. I think the album like art from uh, from that album Tarkus. It it was really because there were like imaginary kind of uh, characters, like the uh, like the Manticore, the lion with the. Uh, tale of a scorpion and uh, and uh, the, uh, and other uh, other characters as well, and they were like fighting on each other. And I uh, like listen listen to album and uh, kind of imagined how the uh, songs they were like reflecting a battle between different characters, and yeah. that was quite of uh, my mindset when I was like uh, five or six years old. But uh, that album still like got me uh, at times. Uh, it's uh, it's really been in my musical DNA since very from very early age. Yeah, yeah, it's really really nice when there is a particular album or 
a song or in general something that uh, it keeps being big in your life since you were a kid so it's uh, it's something something that uh, i love about about music in particular because you you yeah. keep taking with you those those important uh, soundtrack of your life <laughs> let's say yeah, yeah that's true it, it kind of uh, it kind of uh, like uh, floats you through different different eras of your own life and of course uh, for me like music has always been uh, expressing feelings and uh, like uh, I think it's always like a dream like an, uh, an imagery imaginary or uh, and the like uh, you can uh, you can feel like different different places and different feelings different kind of maybe smells they are connected to some music some way so uh, i think it, i i have always felt like a music it, it, it's uh, it, it it has a deeper meaning for yeah. me in, in in many ways uh, i like to say that the music is uh, the poetry for the soul um, mm -hmm. yeah and i always also say that uh, music is life because i cannot image life without music so yeah that's that's the that's what how big music is and i think that is uh for most of the people a big thing whatever they are listening <laughs> so yeah but uh, what's the best uh, uh, concert that you have seen mm. Well, I think uh, if we're talking about maybe artists uh, of metal, I, I think uh, Iron Maiden, uh, it was 1999. The Bruce uh, has just, uh, he, he just uh, rejoined the band and the, the band was on fire. It was in uh, Old Ice Hall in Helsinki. And uh, Megadeth was uh, a support, or like, a, well, can't say it was a co-headline, but, but well, yeah. So maybe two of my all-time favorite bands at the same time. But had to say that the uh, Maiden's gig was so good that it kind of maybe downgraded Megadeth uh, at a certain level. But uh, it, it was really fantastic. Um, uh, the band had the absolute absolutely amazing energy and they they it it was uh, shown that the rest of the guys they were so glad that bruce came back to the band and the the train was running really yeah. really high speed at that time that was maybe one of the best metal shows that uh, i have seen but otherwise i think gary moore in 1998 in uh, in pori jazz festival it was it was really nice and and carl santana next year uh, it was or yeah the gary moore was 1997 and santana was in puisto blues Järvenpää in 1998 they, they were really really like yeah. nice shows i i can imagine that they were <laughs> yeah. yeah uh when did you start to play guitar uh, uh, it was relatively like uh, old age. I think I I really got into music before I started playing. Uh, yeah, I think it, it was somewhere between maybe 12, 13 years old. So not so not so young, how to say? Because I have a lot of friends that they've been uh, starting. They have been starting started to play like uh, before ten, or at the age of maybe six to seven. So uh, it, relatively like old, old age to say. Do you remember uh, uh, which one was your first guitar? Yeah, I can actually I can remember quite well. It was uh, it was a. Uh, 
Gibson Les Paul uh, special, and I have did a lot of a lot of. Uh, I had a summer job, and uh, I have a quite spared uh, tons of money from my uh, from the perspective uh, back and back in the day. It was it was really like uh, it was really a lot of money. I I think it was like uh, uh, seven to uh, eight, maybe was it like seven to seven and a half thousand Finnish marks at the at the moment at the uh, late nineties. So it so it was it was quite expensive then, and uh, I I have waited like uh, almost a year to have that guitar. That was yeah. really like a special occasion. Back in the day, and uh, uh, how many guitars do you own now? Mm, at the moment, I have four guitars, and uh, then I have one buzuki, which I also actually I played it on the Island album. Uh, the the one song that uh, I I was re co producing and writing myself, Two Moons. Uh, there, there's a part, uh, buzuki part at the end of the song. So, but yeah, uh, three electric guitars and one acoustic and one buzuki at the moment. Yeah. And uh, when you so are not so, not so many, not so many, but they are well, uh, really well qualified over the years. Yeah. To yeah. Say. <laughs> and when you are on the stage with a pressure point, uh, what gear do you use? Uh, actually, at the moment, I just replaced my, um, uh, uh, my amp, uh, it, nowadays it's, uh, like I have a Dictech preamp and then, then I have the power amp from Palmer and they are both like rack versions. So it really kind of helps, uh, um, when when you carry your stuff around yourself, you want to be, <laughs> you want to have it like the uh, uh, like a compact way. So so I really try to like downgrade the size of my rig <laughs> today, so it's more comfortable to have it having it around. But yeah, well, well maybe Digitec Palmer, and then there are um, several different pedals. Maybe one of my how to say signature sounds comes from the Hugh Skettner uh, Rotosphere. It's like a Leslie simulator that uh, the um, uh, maybe in uh, uh, 60s and 70s they used that kind of effect a lot with the a uh, lot of with the organs, and that was like a more more like a Hammond and synthesizer kind of, uh, or at least. Uh, organic like a Hammond kind of sound uh, but it it simulates like like of that old Leslie cabinet rotating yeah. around and it it works really well with the guitar as well and there are uh, uh, actually on the island album there are at least you can hear it very clearly on on the song uh, the first part of the song so ordinary so if you listen to that song that there there is the <laughs> like the effect is on. Yeah. But now let's go to the random topic. This is my jar of random topics. And let's yeah. see what we are going to get. And uh, let's hope there is something that you are into. <laughs> you never know with this jar. But yeah, I think yeah. this one, uh, okay, there is something that you can talk about because it's air. And uh, Bert, I I don't know how to pronounce every time, but yeah, you have long hair. And yeah, uh, uh, have you ever thought to hair? Yeah, <laughs> have you ever thought to yeah, it seems cut that, them no, off? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really uh, actually, I think uh, I think <clears throat> this is like. Uh, like a normal me during the work days, of course, my hair is open when I when I'm playing live, and uh, 
Well, well, yeah, what you can say, it always been like, uh, I haven't had a thought about, uh, yeah, I have to have a long hair or that, but of course uh, at the very early age, it, it just kind of happened that they, yeah, let it grow and then it kind of start. <laughs> then, then my kind of, uh, I'm in the pitch mode to say that <laughs> I'm really stuck in the long hair. After, uh, after I had my uh, military service, uh, and then I, then I was uh, bald like for a half year. But after that, there, uh, there hasn't been any haircuts <laughs> since. <laughs> so. <laughs> so so I mean, it's been it uh, yeah yeah it's easy not not going to the barber shop for for over 25 years so. <laughs> yeah and how do you take care of your hair do you have any particular routine or just a shampoo and uh, whatever um, well uh i have this kind of certain because uh when you have uh, long enough hair the uh, actually this uh, it kind of dries and I have this uh, I'm not really sure but it's kind of uh, is it like something like argan oil or that kind of stuff that really have kind of maintenance kind of influence <laughs> on your hair that I have to like when you have especially when you have this kind of natural really uh, like curly curly hair it it really kind of helps that the the it doesn't yeah like. it was interesting <laughs> yeah, because it, in finland there are not many people with curly hair yeah yeah you so are one of them <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's true no yeah, but, uh, otherwise otherwise than that normal shampoo and condition or stuff maybe once or twice a week and that's it and uh, what Nothing about special. your official uh, hair <laughs> well there are not a lot of it <laughs> actually it's i i think it uh, i have always said that it kind of compensates that <laughs> really <laughs> long hair but by but my mustache and my beard they are really like there are um um how to say they are ridiculous. <laughs> there are none. <laughs> or, there are none, or at least uh, there's a really few, <laughs> few of my face or hair. But uh, it, it really kind of, I, I think some people, uh, some people uh, are just, uh, it's really hard when you have like, uh, um, uh, if your beard or your mustache is, it, it's growing uh, really fastly. So it, it could be, kind of uh, when you have a, a like a tight time schedule and you really don't have a, that much time to take care of yourself that often it's more uh, more more appropriate and it, it's more it, it really helps that you don't have to think about shaving your face all the time. <laughs> well, they are so always I've, uh, kind of positive. Okay. <laughs> if, if they yeah. are not growing that much, you don't have to think in the morning, should I trim a bit or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't have that kind of problems. <laughs> yeah. But uh, do you use any oil or any wax or... Yeah, yeah. There are uh, some kind of... I, I think it's why uh like soothing balm or it, it's like that kind of uh form and i i'm not really sure i i think it's l'oreal or what, what the brand was but it's some kind of some kind of uh soothing soothing oil um maybe a few times a week yeah yeah actually because yeah save yeah because w when you're getting old you uh, uh for it it's for the man, men as well uh, that we got wrinkles. <laughs> so <laughs> have to have to try have to try something. <laughs> some some uh, care for yourself, but nowadays it's quite common to find uh, many products for uh, uh, bird and and so on. So it's it's really nice that also for men there is. Uh, uh, more stuff on, on the on the shelf because once there was just the 
few products and uh, that was. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. Actually, we had a discussion uh, uh, with my with my <clears throat> one of my band members as we talk and talk about uh, talked earlier about delirium disorder. We had the discussion with Juha Juha Kupiainen that uh, he uses uh, really really make <laughs> like a <laughs> facial and hair treatment. I, I was re when I was at his place. Maybe it's like a year or two years ago or something. I was really, really like uh, overwhelmed <laughs> of of the collection of different kind of. What is this strange shit over here? <laughs> so, so there is a putting big this on your face or what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really like uh, I was really overwhelmed by the different options that what, yeah. what kind of what kind of <laughs> smudge well, you can together. put on your face. <laughs> but let's take another, I think this one. And this one is not the first time that it came. It came a few times now. It's fears. So what is your biggest fear? Well, as we talked earlier, uh, the world without art and music would be really miserable place and of course uh, the reality is that we have seen in like last two years the situation in eastern uh, eastern europe it's really really hard to comprehend what kind of things people have to like cope cope on there and they, they really can't imagine what the horrors that the uh, war can bring bring on to you and it, it it's really hard at the same time when we uh how to say consider we we western people we are living our secured lives here and they, at the same time there are thousands of people that are are deceased uh, in, in ukraine and in the in, in Israel, in uh, the situation with the Palestinians, it's it's really horrible and miserable to think of. Uh, I, I think uh, at these kind of times, we need more music and more art and more kind of uh, maybe... I don't want to sound like too hippie, but I think the maybe more understanding and love and music and that, that kind of solidarity we we have to bring it to the world because there there are if we don't do something the evil prevails. Yeah, and then maybe that's that... my biggest my my biggest fear is maybe that the we are uh, we are forced to live in a world that the, you can, you can have a freedom of speech and freedom of what you what you think what you what you want to feel what you want to experience you don't have the freedom for that that's maybe my biggest fear. Yeah, and uh, uh, what I was saying? Ah, damn! It it went away from my mind, but I, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's back. It's back. <laughs> um, I also think that uh, uh, the the world did learn nothing from history because it seems that it keeps kind of repeating, and. Uh, the, the the history just studying the history you learn that uh, what war do what war do is just uh, kill uh, the innocent people and those mm -hmm. one that uh, like to play to the world are the the one staying safe and live yeah. in well. so it's uh, yeah. it's really sad and uh, around the world there are several wars because the i i'm not sure about how many wars and uh, how the situation is all over the world but i know that also uh in different place in africa for example there are some some internal wars and um, but i when, when someone asks about my opinion on wars i'm i'm like I can't uh, say 
this is uh, right, this is wrong. Uh, like, for example, uh, for what is happening in uh, Israel and Palestine is going on from I don't know how many years. And uh, yeah. I don't have the knowledge uh, on the on the topic to be able to to be sure to say nothing because I don't know not I really don't know nothing. So I feel sometimes when I see all the people uh, putting down their ideas and I'm like I don't know nothing. I I feel a bit stupid sometimes. But uh, yeah, but I think it's more wise to maybe hold your fire to say uh, uh, when when you don't have the knowledge. Uh, yeah. Uh, and all you don't know all the different aspects of that crisis. You you can't you can't really like uh, argue about it. It's yeah. more wise to remain silent at some points. I I think uh, the same uh, have the same thoughts as you have about them. But of course, like uh, in a big picture, of course, that really kind of concerns you. Yeah. True. Where, uh, for, especially when you don't know about much about the crisis and uh, if we think about situation between Israelis and Palestinians that and that being that uh, that kind of that crisis has has been boggling around like uh, of course uh, uh, like uh, how to say uh, more visibly it has been present from the second world war but the, the roots of the crisis, uh, they they go a lot further. And um, but as you said, when you don't know much about it, you can't really argue about it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and of course the like, I don't want to sound I have a like a really uh, tight folio hat in my head, but uh, of course the environmental. Uh, changes they 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 are of course that's that's maybe one of my biggest fears is uh also that that what kind of world we leave to to the next generation is yeah. there like some some kind of what you can choose to do about how you like consume uh what's your kind of uh what is the term is it like uh, your personal carbon stamp on the world or uh, that 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 really concerns me that what kind of world we leave, leave to our kids yeah. so yeah that's true that's true it's something that uh, everyone should uh, think about uh, how you are living in this world and uh, what you are doing uh, and how you can improve mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. For for the future generation. Yeah. Yeah. But about uh, what comes to the fears, it's uh, how to say it's kind of soothing that at least you can do something about uh, about the things that you choose by yourself. You you can you can really affect things like uh, choosing something that is. How to say at least on your own opinion they are kind of a uh, morally uh, right thing to do so yeah so so you still have to you can do a positive impact as well if you want to that's true but uh, let's go and talk about uh, something more 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 shallow and more more happy because we are going to talk <laughs> yeah. about Luca. <laughs> yeah, it, it it really got in the kind of deep shit <laughs> already. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But are you doing a pizza right now? Yeah, I think uh, we had a. Uh, I'm not sure if your former uh, uh, former uh, interviews they they really had like the uh, online uh, online or uh, oh, the real time. Uh, Pizza baking at the same time, but I think uh, we they, could they maybe. They didn't, but it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think I th thought that uh, this would maybe be kind of a refreshing side or new side 
to this concept that I'm yeah. redoing pizza at the same time that we we are doing yeah. the interview. I just uh, I'm trying to set up the camera properly. Like, let's so see you are going I'm... to work on your pizza, and I'm going to ask you a question. So yeah, what is your favorite pizza? Uh, actually, there are there are several uh, different options, but uh, today I think that. I'm uh, doing this uh, whole baking myself. The, these are actually like the, how to say, uh, <clears throat> the the actual uh, uh, pizza bread. It's it, it's like from uh, from fridge, <laughs> from store. Oh. So it, it's like a half ready. But I think uh, um, maybe special opera. That that's always like the. Uh, that's like an easy easy option and h- how to say one of my favorites but uh today i decided to uh, do um and there are, of course uh the tomato sauce it has uh, uh, a hint of uh sriracha okay. and then there's uh, maybe tabasco? a few drops of tabasco as well so there's a little bit hotness from the uh, to the tomato sauce and uh, then my um, I really like uh, chicken, maybe chicken uh, and what's the most important thing? Pineapple, <laughs> because that's the question always. That yeah, uh, does it so belong for, to pizza? And, in your opinion, yeah. pineapple belongs to pizza. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it it really is uh, actually. Uh, there are, <laughs> there are. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it so there's gonna be pineapple in my pizza and uh, and today uh, we are also having this kind of uh, I think these are really kind of handy if you want to do pizza by yourself but you don't want to like pre-cook every option you can use these kind of uh, half ready uh, okay, a little adver- advertisement here, but actually the Atria Vuolu has this kind of half-ready chicken slices and that kind of uh, kind of thing. And the uh, other one is this uh, this kebab. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, the pizza I'm doing, <clears throat> or actually one of my favorites I'm doing today, gonna consist uh, this uh, fajitas. Uh, a spiced uh, chicken, and uh, then my uh, and then there's pineapple, and of course uh, two different kind of cheeses. There are emmental, and then then there are mozzarella, and then um, then some fresh paprika, and and then uh, actually the. Uh, the secret ingredient that I'm using, and uh, of course, because there are a kind of uh, different labels from these, uh, I think the Eric's uh, sauces, they are really like, uh, I think uh, the Kokauppa uh, in Finland, uh, at least Kesko has them uh, on their, on uh, this is their branch, but this kind of uh, uh, chicken with bearness sauce. This is my secret ingredient. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, but and, and... I, I have a question. Do you want yeah. to prepare the pizza and tell what you are doing uh, while we are uh, doing this interview still? Because uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, Zoom meeting is uh, uh, going to an end in uh, four minutes, but we can create another Zoom meeting and you are going to do your pizza. It will be like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we can we can do <laughs> do a different meeting for for the actual. Of course, if uh, we we have had more time, that uh, I can maybe do some uh, real time uh, real time um, uh, like like do a different and put the different uh, ingredients to the to the pizza and maybe of course. Uh, the, the eating the the good the eating side as well but now now if we don't have enough time we can we can end it here but at, at least you got got my An opinion idea, idea of uh, your pizza idea of, yeah 
Because I thought the, if we had this uh, podcast, it's about metal and pizza, we should maybe do do both like uh, thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, you know, next time that you are come that you come to Pori, uh, yeah. we should go and eat somewhere pizza and do maybe a live on Instagram, on YouTube, or whatever, and. Uh, yeah. And then talk about the pizza. Is this a good pizza? Or is this the right pizza yeah. for the gig? <laughs> this will be like yeah. uh, the something that I would like to do. I have talked with some uh, some other artists that maybe we should do that. So it's uh, it's really nice. But uh, yeah, uh, well, now we have at the end we 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 have done this interview uh, and uh, you had a lot of uh, interesting uh, story to tell <laughs> and uh, i'm really happy that you were up to do the, this um so thank you for being my guest and um, i hope we do, we do it in the future also um, yeah yeah Th thanks for having me it was uh, really 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 fun and uh we hope that we have to maybe uh, uh, continue processing this kind of <laughs> pizza pay baking side at the at the show later. Yeah. So yeah, but but we'll see. It would be fun to maybe uh, you as in uh, with an Italian origin, you could maybe show that w what's your favorite pizza as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it, it what could are the be a, an idea to, to do this? Uh, yeah, I can. I I have to 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 create the 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 thing uh, how to do a pizza. But I'm I'm not a a pizza pizzaiolo as in Italy they they are you know art kind of art yeah. maker. But uh, I can tr I can try to do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we can we can we can do a at, at pizza we when we are try. doing the pizza at the same time and compare what we are doing. That's that's yeah. like, that's an idea. But yeah, would you like to say something to people that are watching this interview? Yeah. Um, well, come to see our gigs with pressure points. There are gonna be some. Uh, during this year and may, uh, hopefully a lot more during 2024 and buy our new album. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It does. <laughs>